When I was around 11 years old, um, I was always a leader, but I was a bad leader. I was the ones who motivated the boys to throw rocks through the windows. <laughs> or wait till the school bus come by and we shoot the windows out with BB guns. That was me. And one day my friends and I was walking through uh, Mr. Smith's yard and he, he called us, hey, come here. And he paid each of us $3 for walking through his yard. I said, use the people, call the police when you walk through their yard. Or use the people, hey, don't step in my grass anymore. But this man paid us $3 each to walk through his yard. Didn't know it was gonna take over almost 20 years for me to understand what was his method in doing so. After giving us money, every day we started walking through this man's yard hoping to get paid, but the money got less and less and less. And, and I, after, out of all the people in the group, he picked me out. Hey, I want you to be at my house six o'clock in the morning. You wanna make some money? I'll show you how to make some money. And here I am at 11, 12 years old. This man is teaching me how to build houses. This man is teaching me how to fix cars. That's a transmission, that's an alternator, that's a wrench, that's a screwdriver. Grab me the socket wrench and I'm learning. I learned so much in the process of this man taking out, out time with me. And when I got called into ministry, almost 20 years later, I went back to Mississippi and I knocked on his door. And I just want to know what made you give us that money that day? That started a friendship, that started a fatherhood, a sonship. What made you do what you did? And he took a deep breath and he said, come in, I want to talk to you. With tears in his eyes, he said, I didn't want you getting money the illegal way. I know how young men want money. And I want to teach you how to make an honest living at a young age. So that's why I taught you how to clean 18 semi-trucks. That's how I taught you how to lay concrete and paint houses. I taught you those things because I want to give you something that no one can take away from you, and that's your knowledge. That's your knowledge. That's what you obtain up here. No one can take that away from you, young man. And he said, I also want to be in your life what my father wasn't for me. He said, I went up the road for a little while. And when people, black folks in Mississippi say up the road, they talking about prison. I took a little vacation. That means he went to prison. And so, and I was like, why you went to prison? He said, okay, back in the early 1950s, I was on a lynching block. He said, in Natchez, Mississippi, uh, they falsely accused me of raping a young lady. And the Ku Klux Klan took me down to the lynching block. He said it was the most, most frightening time of my life. I'm giving a lot of inform historic information also about Mississippi too, and how dark it was in, in those days. And he said, if it wasn't for the owner of that store that knew my family, a white owner of a store, he said, take that boy down. I know that boy. He, he wasn't there. He, he plays with my boys. I know him. Take him down. And that man had a lot of, he had a lot of pull. He had a lot of authority in the city. But they gave him an ultimatum. They said, we don't want to see you in this city no more. And they ran him out of the state of Mississippi. It's where he found himself with family up north. He said, when I got up there, I got connected with the mob. He said, a man approached me one day and said, hey, would you like to make $500 in just a couple seconds? And he said, yeah. And he said, my cousin was down, I was down, we was all for it, but we found out what it was. He said, Stephen, overnight I became a hit man. If anybody owed the mob money, I was a hit man. And he said, I'm not proud. He said, it hunts me every day of my life. He said, when I finally got caught and went to prison, he said, I woke up one morning, I looked in the mirror. He said, I wasn't happy with the person I saw. He said, I literally saw the devil. He said, when I got out, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and it's been over 40 years, and I never looked back, and I've been in love with God ever since. That's what made me give you that money. That's what made me stop you that day. I put you out because I can just tell that you were the leader of the bunch. And here I am as a minister, coming back 20 years later, now I'm giving him advice while he's going through his turmoil, while he's still having nightmares, not knowing you're helping me now, but God is preparing me in the wilderness to come back around and lead you out of your Egypt. So we have talks on the phone, we have prayers together, he called me for biblical uh, uh, questions that he need answers to, and even in his old age, God has used me to be a healing mechanism for him. And so I have been around some fascinating people. 
I have heard some fascinating stories, not all good, and each one of these stories leads to salvation and shows me that they're broken, but not dead. And, 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 and to God be the glory out of all these stories.